now that we have reviewed the definition of reaction time, movement time, and response time, I would request you to go back to the online lecture video or your notes to actually read about it a little more, look into examples, and try to not only understand the definition, but also the differences. And the characteristics, characteristics of all of them so that when you attend this lab you do not make a mistake and you get full grade then we talked about the different three different types of uh, reaction time reaction time the, so RT those were simple reaction time choice reaction time and discrimination reaction time in this cases I would also request you to have a look into the definition and try to understand the differences so understanding the differences is a very vital issue differences very important so now I assume that you know all about this all the basic definitions and differences and the types and everything now let us have a look into the details of lab number three let me change the okay so let us have a look into the details of lab number three so as I said, in this lab, you and your group is a designer. And your task is to come up with a reaction time measuring device or uh, yeah, a reaction time measuring device where you will be able to measure reaction time of your group mates without using time as a measure. So you cannot use time. So you might be thinking, what is this about? So let me give you an example. In my design, what I've done is I'm taking a ruler and I'm requesting the participant whose reaction time I'm about to check to place his hand at a certain location. So my design standard is the ruler is always placed at a certain point here. This is fixed all the time for all the participants across all the different measurement situations. And the participant always starts by placing his or her hand over here. And at a certain random time, I would let go the ruler. So the ruler would drop, and maybe if this is the ruler, it drops over here, and this is when the person grabs it. So, if this distance initially, so what I mean by that is, um, so if this position of the hand was the zero centimeter position, when this ruler drops, this zero position goes over here, and we find a length. This length is my reaction or response time. Reaction or response time. Now, the thing that you have to be careful is the standards. So, always the ruler starts here and the hand, participant's hand, is placed here. So that there is no bias. And whenever you perform, or whoever the participant is, they all have similar chances and always make sure let me change color here so always make sure that you have a fixed measuring standard in my case it was centimeters make sure this is consistent sorry make sure this is consistent whatever's measuring uh, criteria you might use that doesn't matter as long as it is consistent and it has some kind of unit in my case the unit being centimeters um, so thing that you cannot do is you cannot use this example you have to come up with your own example you cannot use the example that I've shown here own example you have to come up with your own example so this is the idea so let us go into the details of each question so now that I've given you a brief understanding of how I would have approached this problem design problem let us go through each of the questions so that you know what you are uh, you know what you're expected to do so let us look into question number one first Question number first. Uh, question number one says, explain the instrument's design principle, structure, and means of measurement. So you need to be ex you need to explain in this question how your entire setup would work. So in my case, the entire setup is uh, the ruler is placed at a certain location, which is fixed for all participants across all trials, and all the participants always would start uh, to, uh, by placing their hands on a, in a very certain position, which is at the zero position of the ruler, and at some random point, uh, I would let go of the um, ruler and the participant needs to grab it. So this is basically the design principle and the structure. 
Uh, so this is the design principle and structure part. And the means of measurement in my case was length. Uh, the units were centimeters or I might have used or I can use inches. However, whichever you use be consistent across all trials and across all participants so that your results are consistent. So if you're using inches, stay with inches. If you're using centimeters, in that case, stay with centimeter format. Don't switch back and forth. That being said, none of you are allowed to use any of the ideas that I have discussed here in this lab for this lab number three. Now, the last part talks about, please explain using a, using a schematic diagram. What I mean by that is you need to create a diagram. Uh, you can, uh, it can be uh, on a piece of paper. You can uh, draw it on your own and don't really have to be a computer as long as the images are clear and it's explained well through your writing. Always provide a caption for the image. However, make sure that you have scanned that image if you're assuming you're doing it on paper by hand. So you have scanned that and placed it in the doc properly. And the doc goes to online and the printed version. Uh, and then it goes to all the TA. So this is the meaning of schematic diagram that draw the things, explain the, explain your design through an image, which is hand drawn, or you can also use computer to explain. Uh, now, question number two is first, let me delete all this. So question number two was, question number two is the instrument needs to be capable of measuring both simple and choice reaction time. So make sure that the design that you've chosen can be used for both. So simple reaction time and choice reaction time. So how would I extend my simple reaction time test here into a choice reaction time test? Well, just add another ruler right over here. And I will have, I will be holding all of this two at the very same position. And I will randomly let it, let one go and the hand will be placed exactly here, somewhere here in middle. That is the idea. As I've said earlier, you cannot use this example. You have to come up with your own example. Um, and then in question number two, it also asks, please explain how your instrument meets this specification of choice reaction time. So as I've already explained, please explain that using a schematic diagram as well, schematic diagram. Um, question number 2b this was question number 2a now let's look into question number 2b question number 2b basically talks about let me see okay so 2b in question number 2b uh, the instrument must be capable of implementing a variable for period what do i mean by that remember that i said that i will randomly let this go here in my case the go signal is the vision system that the ruler is going down ruler going down this is the vision system. Uh, the warning sign can be like, I make a sound, small sound, like, I don't know, maybe a whistle. And this whistle and this go signal, um, what I mean is the time when I drop the ruler, this is the four period. And I can change it randomly, but I will not go beyond like, so the time period would be in between from one to five seconds. There's no point making the person wait like one hour. That would not make any sense. I'll get bored too. So, and now you need to think about why we want to do this. And you might actually think about um, in terms of anticipation. Think about it. So question, let's have a look into question number three. This is one of the most trickiest questions. Tricky, actually the trickiest. So, and I will not give you the answer for my system. Remember, you cannot use ruler and length, the combination of ruler and length in your example, uh, in your reply actually, not in your example, I'm sorry. Um, so the question number three, the question is, explain what your system is measuring. Is it reaction time, response time, or movement time? Be very careful. In order to be able to answer this question, you need to know the definition of all these three, and you need to know the differences, and you need to use both of them to answer. So, and you always need to explain your answer. So let's have a look into question number four. 
The first part is what are the mean scores and standard deviations of your group in a simple reaction task. Compare this to scores obtained from a choice reaction task. So you have four or five people and every one of them has to take the simple reaction time test using your system five times. So each person does it five times. So if you are four people, that would mean you have 25. Uh, sorry, four people, it will be 20. And if you are five, in that case, it will be 25. So 25 data, one to 25. And so you need to find the mean, which is the average of your reaction time and also the standard deviation. The equation for standard deviation is given in lab number two, if you remember. And this was also explained in the video uh, error and variability related to lab number two. And you need to ex use Excel to compute all this. And then you need to do similar uh, study with your choice reaction time system. So you do the very same thing, collect 20 or 25 data, check the mean and the standard deviation. And you need to come to a logical uh, conclusion to why this is happening. Why, say for instance, if the, so say for instance, the mean of the square root, uh, sorry, not square root, it's simple reaction time, is say for instance, the mean of simple reaction time was uh, five centimeters for my case. And the mean of choice reaction time was um, seven centimeters. So my question would be, why is this bigger? You need to be able to, you have to answer this question. Why is this bigger or why is this smaller? And then you have to look into the variation of um, simple reaction time and choice reaction time. Variation here is measured using standard deviation, um, which is a measure of how your outcomes are distributed compared to your mean. So a higher standard deviation would mathematically mean that your outcome data are very uh, highly spread around your mean. Whereas if the values are, if the value of your standard deviation is very small, it, it would mean that if the mean is over here, the data are very closely clustered. Whereas a high variation, uh, oh, sorry, a high standard deviation would mean like given the mean over here, the data are like this. So you need to explain this information from the context of uh, reaction time and choice reaction time, it's simple reaction time and choice reaction time. And to be able to answer this, you need to know the definition of these two and their inherent differences, their characteristics, so their properties, how they're different. You have to know all this and you need to incorporate all this information in your reply. Um, so let's clean this part of the whiteboard. So for B, here the idea is, so the question first, this, let's explain the question first. Do you think that different stimuli would lead to different reaction time? So what is this basically asking is, what, uh, here in my case we used vision. If I did not, ha if I have not used vision and decided to use some electric shock, would this affect the outcome of simple reaction time and choice reaction time? So whether this will change? I think some, something similar has been discussed in the lectures, not mine, but the professors. So I would request you to go back to those lectures and listen to the ideas of how different uh, stimuli affect the outcome. So by outcome, I mean how different types of stimuli like electric shock, vibration or vision would affect your system and how that would change the reaction time uh, in terms of whether the system was in simple reaction time or whether the system was in choice reaction time mode. So how this thi how different stimuli will affect that? Have a look into, uh, so you need to have a look into the lectures to be able to answer this question. Uh, now let's go to question number five, which is an interesting part, where we request you to upload a video of maximum one minute showing the working principle and the data collection method of your instrument. You can use simple cameras like iPhone, laptop, or cell phones. However, please make sure that you have uploaded all these videos in YouTube or uh, Vimeo, something like that. And please provide the link in your doc file and make sure this is uploaded. Um, do not uh, make the file too big. Uh, sometimes they don't allow uploading big files, but so you can understand, make sure that we can have access to this. Otherwise you're losing five points. This is for five points. So this should be simple. So now that we're done with this, I've explained all the five questions with an example. 
and have given you all the necessary details that you require to be able to answer this answer all the questions in this lab. I hope to see all you, see all of you in class. Um, take care. Bye.